Hello everybody and welcome to Fishery. I'm Alexander Williamson and today we are going to be counting down the best 10 background plants for the aquarium hobby. And when I include background plants, I want to also mention that these are rock stars. These are going to be the big plants. So maybe you're not going to put it in the far back of the tank literally, but these are the bigger plants. They tend to grow bigger or they're stem plants that can spread out and take over a large area. Uh, and over time, these should be like the main feature, the main attraction plant-wise in your aquarium. And so these are plants that I think do an excellent job at that. Plus they're low maintenance and easy to care for. You don't need to be using CO2 or anything special like that. Uh, just having a decent substrate with uh, maybe a few root tabs or some nutrients in it or dirt in your aquarium will do just fine. Uh, and I think that these are some of the more interesting looking ones also that are still accessible. They're not so rare and far out there that you won't see them. Now, if you want to get a hold of some of these plants, I have links in the description to uh, Aquatic Arts and to Dan's fish that both sell plants plenty and with all those they're people that i've vetted and trust and you get a discount so if you want to check it out feel free to check out the links in the description and also uh hitting that like button really does help lately uh it's had a really hard time on the channel uh getting people alerted that the videos are even up so if you could do that, or maybe even leave a comment of your favorite background plant or favorite rock star, standalone, interesting plant for your aquarium, uh, I'd really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. And uh, if you enjoy this kind of video, let me know by uh, doing that. All right, let's start at number 10 with the 10th best background plant, uh, which is a trick. Uh, it's actually several different Ludwigias, but this one happens to be Super Red Ludwigia Palustris. And uh, there are Super Reds that are Repens, that are Glandulosa, different types of Ludwigia that have morphed and been red. But this one is one of my favorites. It's one of the big rounded leaf ones, which Repens and Reuben are also sort of like. But this one in highlight, like this ADA setup here, uh, with a good soil, good substrate, you can get an absolute curtain of this stuff, or you can have just little clumps of it planted around. But you can see the contrast in color. This stuff is almost a purple color, and even without super high-tech stuff, without CO2, it will still be a pretty nice red color. And it even stays red coming up and out of the water in a lot of the varieties that are out there. Uh, just remember to... Uh, Cut it and replant those tips if you want to create a nice solid wall of it. All right, number nine is Lagonandra meboldi and Lagonandra carolensis. These are two species found in the hobby, pretty widespread now. You can get tissue cultures of them from Tropica or ADA. They're a broadleaf plant and they are beautiful. They have little speckles on them and green and bronze and red and that's in the carolensis. This one here you're seeing now is carolensis. It can get fairly big in even medium light but it will get very large in low light trying to reach for the light which is kind of cool, kind of a little different than a lot of other plants out there. But you can really see the details and almost little patterns and even like little trees or faces or mazes or I don't know, whatever you think you see in, in this plant, it's one you can really stare at. Now there's other versions of these Lagonandra. There's Lagonandra meboldi, which is another very common Lagonandra in the hobby. And that comes in red and chocolate. And in a minute here, we'll see it comes in silver powder. And I paid way too much money, uh, almost $300 for this for the first time that I had it. Uh, years and years ago. Now it's closer to 30 to $50. And these leaves will get a foot long in uh, low light with proper nutrients. And uh, in high light, it can do well too. But just remember that the sparkles on there are really, really beautiful. And if it has too high a light, it'll get burned out and uh, you won't have that nice, subtle silver sparkle. There's also a pink sparkling version too called Pink Princess. All right, coming in at number eight is Cryptosporalis red and red tiger. 
these are beautiful plants. Now, the red variety that you see here, it comes to the top of just about any tank as long as it's you know not more than two or three feet deep but these things can reach very very tall and they have thin little stems and they create this nice little jungle effect in the corner this is the tiger version the red tiger crypt spiralis and this is another really beautiful version it doesn't have green down the center and it doesn't have as much peach in in it but you can see the uh, normal red version, the non -ti the non tiger version, it has that green that turns to peach when it's in high light uh, up at the top. However, if it's in too high of light for too long, sometimes it gets burned out. So just be a little careful with that, but you can make a nice thick jungle of it. So next on our list is going to be Laganandra Pantanal, and this is one that is just a little bit different. At number seven, this one can be a beautiful, almost otherworldly red, pink, and fuchsia with this kind of beautiful pale straw yellow and peach colored uh, stem or lower part of the leaf. And then the tips are actually bright, soft pink again uh, in highlight with CO2. Now, if it doesn't have that, if it's in a low tech tank, it's actually a rainbow colored Ludwigia. It comes in peach and orange with little hints of red and green, dark green, light green, uh, and you know, orange all throughout it. And it's this nice little pom pom of a plant. One or two rows of it you can plant next to each other. Uh, it's got a nice red stem usually, uh, or at least a nice orangey kind of a pinkish stem if it's not in highlight. And you can get anywhere from uh, soft greens in low light tanks to all the way to this really bright pinks and even like blondes if it's in a super high light tank uh, with CO2 and high fertilizers. But it's just another one to show off how versatile making an actual screen of plants can be. Number six, Aponageton Madagascar Lace. Now this is an incredible plant. You may have seen this before. I hope you've seen this before. It is a plant unlike any other plant out there. It has a crazy pattern with Swiss cheese or more of a grid of holes in it, like a fine textile. And it is a plant that is very hardy. It's one of the few plants in the hobby, along with all the other Aponagetans, that is a true aquatic plant. So like the lilies and things, it can only live underwater, can't live on land, and it will live in low light and do just fine. It'll be a little bit skinny like this, but in brighter light with a little bit of flow in your tank, you'll get big broad leaves that look like this. And these leaves get wide, like up to six inches wide, up to two feet long. They'll fold over, they'll get floppy if you got a lot of flow in the tank. It looks so good in a big tank. And speaking of looking good in a big tank, number five, Cypress Hellfry. I know that's spelled, it's pronounced a little funky, but this is just about the biggest grass plant you're going to get in the hobby commonly. It just looks like a big old piece of grass. See, Cypress Hell Fry. Looks like Hell Fairy. Anyways, it gets big. It doesn't really come out of the water too tall usually, which is kind of nice, unlike some of the other things that are out there in the hobby. But this one just makes for a great effect if you tuck it into, you know, either corner of a big aquascape. And uh, it'll come right up to the top and start to fold over. And it looks absolutely beautiful with a little bit of flow. Uh, you can still get the leaves wide enough that autosynclus and shrimp can clean on it and get rid of algae and things like that, but it's a really nice dynamic plant in any tank. So coming in at number four is the nymphaeas, and there are so many nymphaea lilies. Uh, there's the red tiger lily, there's the smaller dwarf versions, there's the orange ones, the tricolor ones, N nymphaea micrantha. I have species spotlights on the various ones, but needless to say, these are really cool. These are the tiger version, and they get rather large. Now, even the small ones still are sizable plants generally, and they will reach for the light. As long as they have an open, clear pathway up to the light, you'll get a really nice showing. The red varieties t tend to be kind of that orange peach that you see in that back corner, and then they come up and they can be a very, very bright uh, red in some cases. Sometimes when they're down low, they'll start off in a really electric purple and pink as well with the red varietals. 
uh, that are out there. And all the time they're coming up with new ones. And this is another bulb plant that is a true aquatic plant. But it also gives some cover for fry. It kind of cuts down on the harshness of um, the uh, light coming into the tank. And it kind of plays with the light coming into the tank, which I think is really nice in a pond or tank. Uh, that's kind of deep now you do want to be careful because it can get little holes in it if you don't trim it over time or if you got algae eating crew that's been a little rough on it so i just recommend that you keep it trimmed but it's a great looking plant easy to care for all right coming in at number three we have java ferns now this is an overlooked plant sometimes when you get deep into the hobby because it's such a recommended plant for beginners and also it does get algae rather easily blackbeard algae and things if you don't know how to take care of it so definitely look into how to take care of it you definitely don't want it in extreme high light and you want some flow but sometimes too much flow is not always the best thing. Another really cool thing about this plant is it grows up and out of the water just fine. And it is a big wide plant up and out of the water. And it's hardy and it's got spores on the leaves when it's up and out of the water like a true fern. Uh, underwater it doesn't get that though. And it actually breaks and forms new plants at the tip of each plant. This is a variety called uh, Windlove here with a really crinkly uh, tip with a bunch of different ends to it. But there's also narrow versions, wide versions, split versions, a whale tail version, a trident version. There's so many different versions out there. And it just looks great packed into an aquascape. Uh, you know, gives you that big wall of green. Easy to care for. And doesn't actually have roots. It has rhizomes. So it can be planted on wood or stone. Alright guys, we're almost there. Coming in at number two, we've got Hygrophila pinnatifada. And hygrophilas are a really diverse group of plants, but this one is special to me. It looks like a fern, but it's not a fern. It grows like a stem plant. And you can keep this even as a foreground plant if you have really high light and you keep it trimmed. It has this fern-like node at every section. And each section, it'll grow a long section of stem and then another node of these ferns. And in the U.S., we have kind of a greener version traditionally, but... The last few years we've been seeing this version, which is UK version or European version of Pinatifada, and it is red. And some of it is literally bright, fiery red with CO2 and high light and all that, but it can grow in low light too. All right, coming in at number one is one of the most diverse plants in the hobby, Anubius. And this one here is a Barteri uh, Coffifolia and Fraseri Cross. And that makes it really unique. I did that by pollinating and hybridizing at home. But this one got absolutely massive over the last four or five years and has grown up and out of the tank since it was a little plant and just spills out. And also, you can see that it flowers when you allow it to grow up and out of the tank, which is really cool. And it leaves these little flower corn kernel things uh, that almost look like they're made out of plastic with uh, pollen on the inside, but you can then use a little brush or something and pollinate that when it grows up and out of the tank. But they'll also bloom sometimes underwater and they can provide a whole dark area and a lot of contrast in your aquarium because they get so big when they come up out of the aquarium, even if they're kind of a medium-sized plant underwater. They're also extremely easy to take care of, and pruning them will really help keep it looking great. All right, you guys, we counted them down together. Thank you so much for sticking around through this whole thing. You're a champ. You're one of only 30% of the viewers that do that on this channel, but it does mean a lot to me, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, also, be sure to check out in the future, I'll have a foreground plants video coming out very soon. And uh, check out any of my other videos on plants and uh, botany of the aquatic universe as well, if you're interested. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. Take care and have a great day. Bye.